Chapter 12 Tarry Diddle Town Sarah lived with her mother and father right on the edge of a magic wood Her mother often warned her not to go wandering too far into the wood in case she disturbed the fairy folk and made them cross I should like to follow that little twisty path under the oak trees said Sarah to her mother one day Hush child never think of such a thing said her mother sharply and you must keep indoors with me today and help me bake the bread Sarah pouted and sulked she was a dreadfully lazy little girl and she didn't want to stay indoors at all so when her mother was not looking she slipped out and ran into the wood i will follow that little twisty path she said to herself she ran down the little path under the big oak trees it became darker and darker for the wood grew thick and kept out the sunshine suddenly sarah heard voices and crept behind a tree a little afraid the king says we must be cleaner and tidier said a voice crossly i can't think how we're going to manage it if only we could find a servant sighed another voice but nobody ever comes to tarry diddle town just then a twig that sara was treading on suddenly snapped with a loud noise someone's there cried the voices and sara heard rushing feet then two strange looking creatures appeared in front of her and seized hold of her wrists they had big heads with very thick hair long noses and wide mouths their bodies were small and their feet large who are you cried one creature and what are you doing in our part of the wood i'm sarah said sarah and do let me go you are hurting can you sweep suddenly asked the other creature yes answered sarah and clean windows and make beds oh yes yes said sarah crossly but why are you asking me such silly questions splendid cried both creatures we'll have you for a servant come along with us and they dragged sarah off where are you taking me to asked sarah to tarry diddle town they answered The king of fairy land visited us the other day and said our town was so dreadfully untidy and dirty that if we didn't make it better he would punish us but it's been untidy for so long that we've forgotten how to make it bright and clean well i'd like to visit tarry diddle town said sarah but i'm not going to be your servant so there we have cream cakes and treacle pudding at every meal said one tarry diddle oh said sarah i'd love to go to your town let's hurry up and go when the tarry diddle saw that sarah was eager to go with them they were very pleased they hurried along until they came to a little stream on which rocked a canoe jumpin 
cried the two queer creatures to Sarah. She jumped in, and off went the boat down the stream with the three of them. The stream soon left the wood and came out into open fields. Presently, away in the distance, Sarah saw the queerest village that ever was built. The houses, all of them small, were higgledy, piggledy and crooked. The chimneys were not only on the roofs, but sometimes stuck out of the walls. Some of the doors were very high up, with no steps up to them. Sarah wondered how the people got into them. Here we are, said the tarry diddles jumping out. Sarah jumped out too. Well, she said, as she came near the town, well, I never saw such a queer, untidy, dirty place in my life. Just look at the windows. They are thick with dirt. And the window sills, absolutely black. Sarah wandered around Tarry Diddle Town for a good while. The streets were crooked and wanted sweeping for there were all sorts of papers flying about. I'll peep into a few houses now, said Sarah. She walked into one and found the floor dirty with mud. There was dust on everything and all the curtains wanted washing. Ah, said Sarah, walking out. What a horrid place Tarry Diddle Town is. I shan't stay here long. Soon she came to a street of shops and to her delight there were rows and rows of cream cakes and big plates of steaming hot treacle pudding. You can go and have anything in the shop you like. One of the tarry diddles told her. We don't pay for anything here. Sarah ran in and ate five cream cakes and two plates of treacle pudding. At the end she said, Now I want to go home, please. Oh no, you can't, said the tarry diddles. You must stop and work for us and show us how to make our town clean. Sarah stamped and roared and frowned and sulked. But it was all no use. The lazy little girl had to do what she was told. She was taken to the biggest house in the town and told to put it straight. How she wished she had stayed at home and helped her mother. Well, I'll try to clean the house, said Sarah tearfully. But will you let me go home afterwards? You must stay here a week, said the tarry diddles, for the king is coming then. If he says our town is tidy and clean, we'll let you go home. If not, you must stay till the king comes again. And that may not be for months and months. Only a week, exclaimed Sarah. Why, I can't possibly get things clean and tidy in a week. You are horrid, you tarry diddles. Sarah began working as quickly as she could. She was so afraid the king would come and say Tarry Diddle Town was untidy and then she wouldn't be able to go home. I'll scrub all the floors, said Sarah to herself. So she got a pail of water and scrubbed the floors of the little house till they shone. How clever, how beautiful, 
said all the tarry diddles watching and they ran straight home and scrubbed all their floors to see if they could make them shine too then sara dusted all the walls and all the furniture and polished it till she could see herself in the table and chair legs how wonderful exclaimed the tarry diddles and off they all went to do the same the next day sara pulled down all the curtains and tablecloths and washed them all as white as snow in a big wash tub of hot water they looked simply lovely all hanging out on the line to dry old tarry diddle town was busy washing too and copying sarah how clever you are how clever they kept saying to sarah who was beginning to feel rather pleased with the way the house looked all through the week sarah could find nothing to eat but cream cakes and treacle pudding at last she grew so tired of them that she could hardly bear to let them be oh if i could taste some of mother's homemade bread she sighed why well, do hope the king will think things are tidy and i can go home she cleaned the windows and whitened the window sills and blacked the grates beautiful wonderful said all the funny little tarry diddles going off to do the same in their own houses then came the last day sara looked all over the house and could find nothing dirty and nothing untidy everything shone and glittered tomorrow the king is coming she thought i must bake some bread and get the streets clean today and that's really all she caught up a broom and hurried outside clever girl marvelous girl cried the tarry diddles watching her why didn't we think of sweeping the streets and soon all of them were sweeping too and the streets were as clean as clean Sarah made some bread after that as she thought the king might like something else to eat besides the everlasting cream cakes and treacle pudding after that she was so tired that she dropped asleep in the kitchen oh how lovely everything looks she cried next morning as she went around the town and saw all the houses clean and tidy and neat like the one she herself had lived in there's only one thing left to do what's that cried the tarry diddles crowding around her wash yourselves and brush your hair said sarah they all went off to do it tara tan ta tara tarara the king the king shouted all the tarry diddles rushing out clean and tidy to meet the king and his courtiers sarah went to greetings to you people of tarry diddle town said the grand king of fairy land and then his majesty went into every house to see if it was tidy and clean splendid marvelous cried the king as he went into one house after another who has helped you to do all this 
Sarah has, Sarah has, shouted the tarry diddles, dragging her forward. You have done splendid work, said the king. I'll grant you a wish. What would you like? Oh, may I go home again, please? Begged Sarah. I'm so tired of cream cakes and treacle pudding, and I can only bake bread myself. I'll never be lazy again. Yes, you may go home, said the king kindly. And if Tari Diddle Town ever gets dirty again, I shall know whom to send for to put it right. Shan't I, Tari Diddles? So be careful to keep your houses spick and span in future. He waved his wand. A great wind rushed around Sarah and carried her away. Then, bump! She was standing on the ground again in front of her mother's cottage. Mother! Mother! called Sarah, rushing in. I've come home and I'll never be lazy again. And if you ever meet a little girl who can't bear to eat cream cakes or treacle pudding, ask if her name is Sarah and whether she has heard anything more of Tari Diddle Town.